Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Molly Riker uh, with Futures North, a Minneapolis-based public art uh, practice that operates the intersection of design, uh, innovative technologies, and the construction of social art spaces. We are a multimodal practice, moving fluidly between the industries of art, design, architecture, and urbanism. We're, inter we're interested in the aesthetics of data, how new technologies can help us to visualize, reveal, understand, and understand the diverse fields of information that flow through contemporary culture. In his book, I'm, I'm with the Bears, noted environmentalist Bill McKibben wrote about people's response to climate change. Quote, here science can take us only so far. The scientists have done their job. They've flashed every red light um, now it's time for the rest of us, for the economists, the theologians, the psychologists, and the artists, whose role it is to help us understand what things feel like. It was in this spirit of artistic intervention and social responsibility that phase change was conceived. Art is a powerful way to reach the public and imbue a sense of what things feel like. In June of 2016, Futures North created Phase Change, a temporary public art piece for the Northern Spark Festival, an all-night interactive art festival that draws 40,000 visitors. Phase Change creatively represents the effects of climate change through a dynamic spatial construction of melting ice. It compresses two centuries of warming into a single night of melting. Phase change consists of 12,000 pounds of ice harvested from an urban lake in Minneapolis. The ice was used to construct three walls which face lattices of infrared heat lamps programmed to fluctuate based on climate change data. The project started in March of 2016 when Futures North and 30 volunteers cut, cleaned, and transported 12,000 pounds of ice from Lake Calhoun into an ice house that we constructed. The harvested ice was packed with sawdust and passively stored from March until June, the same method used for decades before electric refrigeration. In June, the ice was removed from the ice house and assembled into three walls. The walls faced lattices of heat lamps programmed with quantitative climate change data to melt the ice in relationship to three different climate change scenarios. The first wall melts in relationship to pre-industrial climate data. The second wall melts in relationship to present-day climate data. And the third wall demonstrates a projected future climate condition. The melting ice reimagines the effects of climate change into an event with a more understandable scale. Visitors can touch, feel, and see it disappear over the course of one night. Its melting directly mirrors the effect of global warming on glacial ice both in the beauty and the tragedy of its rapid deterioration. Phase change makes us witness to our collective fate. The three ice walls create a space in which viewers can engage both, both with the piece and with others. This encourages visitors to consider what it means to face climate change as a community rather than as individuals. A local youth climate change activist group, YAMN, facilitated discussions about climate change, building intergenerational dialogue and harmony for action. Volunteers filled four ounce bottles of melted ice for visitors to take home and remind them of the experience. Climate change is the most consequential challenge of our time, if not the history of the species. Art gets through to people on an emotional level, on a human level. In fact, art is one of the things that makes us uniquely human. Phase change gives visitors a chance to understand what climate change feels like. Where heat and cold and change are the most real is the place where our primal motivations for safety and comfort, comfort reside. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what was the outcome where people asked for, uh, to do something or were, they, were there any proposition on what the action should be? Because that's pretty much the main problem with climate change, that we don't know what, the conf what we can do about it. Was there any lead or any opening? Yeah, so the small bottle that uh, we gave visitors of melted ice to take home with them 
um, had uh, both our website and the website of the climate change activist group that we were working with, and they were encouraged to get in touch and um, activate um, through that organization. Um, but I think it also had a lot to do just with the conversations that they were having with the youth that have spent a lot of time thinking about this. Without the interpreters or the, the climate change activist group, um, how effective do you think the, the art piece standing on the sun would have been? I think it was very effective. Um, we have actually uh, a series of quotes here um, from visitors um, talking about um, face change took something that is often viewed as far away, the effects of global climate change, and showed people how close to home it really is. It's beautiful to see such a tragic thing come to life. So it's, I think um, it was very effective um, in kind of getting to people on that level that um, a graph or an infographic doesn't really connect. Okay, so harvesting 12,000 gallons, pounds. pounds. <laughs> so harvesting 12,000 pounds of water uh, on a climate change level, like that does look like extraction um, to some, uh, and the privilege and opportunity to be able to do so. So was that, how, how did you communicate that, or was there any communication about that part of the process? Like how did you even get access to be able to uh, yeah, harvest 12,000 pounds? Good question. Um, in Minneapolis, there are a series of events called polar plunges, um, where people actually pay money to jump into a frozen lake um, in the middle of the winter. And so the, the hole in the ice was already being cut. Um, and so we took the leftover ice from uh, the hole that was being cut. It's, it's a, uh, it's a limited geographically because of that, that tradition and you know, even the, the, the depth to which the, you know, the lake ice will form each year. And is that something that's gonna make it harder if you were to want to expand a little bit? Are you, are you, are you bounded? Do you have to reimagine the project to scale it and to bring it somewhere else? Yeah, well we absolutely are interest, interested in bringing it elsewhere. Um, and we imagine that either the ice could be transported um, from a colder climate, or um, ice can be purchased because the registration of um, the effects of climate change is not dependent on the ice being harvested. But the, the, I think the moral clarity of the project starts to chip away a little if you're trucking something down Florida from, you know, uh, not, you know, a, a lot further away or purchasing the ice, the embodied energy in the creation of that ice. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, th we're making those decisions all the time. Um, so, I, I mean, I think even making the decision to come to this conference, um, there's a carbon footprint to the, to the, to the flight that we all took to get here, so. That's awesome. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you to everybody for making the decision to come.